Guys, today we've got a ton of brand new Travis Scott sneakers coming, the Yeezy drop that everyone's been waiting for, and you will not believe Trump's new sneaker collection. Welcome to Sneaky Sundays, we've got uh, an absolutely wild one today. So of course, let's kick it off with a release recap which is absolutely frustrating. First one is this pair of Travis Scott's that had a little shock drop. So this is the brand new Sharkadon model or the Travis Scott Nike Zoom Field Jack, and this is some people get them in hand. Basically, they had a shot drop of like a couple hundred pairs. So a very similar strategy that they did with the Jumpman Jacks. Where essentially nobody gets them, they end up reselling for a ton of money, creating this hype and scarcity around them. Now we've seen similar strategies to this used by Nike to create hype for a new silhouette. However, it's getting a little bit out of hand because not only did they do this with this new Travis Scott sneaker, but they did it with the freaking Nigel Sylvester Jordan 4 RMs. So these had a normal release, it wasn't even a shock drop, like these things loaded up on the Nike sneakers app and everything, and maybe it was a different story for you guys out in the US, but here in the UK, there was only 100 pairs for the entire Europe. Let me know if you managed to get a pair, I just honestly don't even understand like why they did the entire like hyping up thing, they did all of these different like marketing campaigns and stuff, just to release 100 pairs. Either way, let me know what sneakers you managed to grab over the week, but let's hop into this upcoming stuff and uh, why don't we just kick it off with the next Nigel Sylvester Jordan 4 RM. So this is the anthracite colorway and we just got a new release date of this. I think the only image that we've seen is a picture from Lil Yachty where he's just holding it up. Uh, honestly, I actually like this colorway more. The all over black looks pretty clean with the suede. So maybe the green pair's only purpose was to just gain hype for this one being so limited. Either way, we do have a release date, like I said, next month, August the 7th. Another release happening in August, which we've been waiting on for a while now, is the Bad Bunny Adidas Gazelle Indoor. This is just the white and black colorway, not the blue San Juan one, which uh, I think this one is pretty solid. I think the main thing throwing people off with this pair of shoes is uh, the size tag on the back, like literally just the size label just slapped on there, which is just a little bit random. These are gonna be dropping on the 17th of August. Also in August, we've got another Fear of God and Adidas release. So I'm just gonna cover the sneakers, but just assume that we're also going to be getting a ton of clothing with this. So we got the Fear of God Athletic 1 sneaker or the basketball model. This one comes in a pretty damn clean, just kind of grayish and a black toe box. Not a bad colorway by any means. Might even be one of my favorites. We're also getting a new colorway of the LA Runner. This is the Sesame one. Very, very similar to what we've already seen. I do like this model. It is comfortable and it feels pretty good on foot. I would suggest going a half size down. They run a little bit big, but uh, yeah, clean sneaker. For sure, the worst of the punch is the slides, which are 100 dollars and these again look identical to the ones that first dropped the super expensive unnecessarily expensive pair that's all we have as of right now three different sneaker models probably a bunch of different clothing all dropping august the 3rd here's a really cool unexpected pair this is a size collaboration on the nike air max dn so we don't have an exact release date for these but uh, they are going to be dropping at some point in 2024 i suspect pretty soon now if you don't know size they're basically a retailer here in the UK and what they've done to the Air Max DN is something that we haven't seen explored yet. So essentially they've changed the materials and they've swapped it out for like leather around this base part. They've matched that color with the midsole so it just kind of looks two-tone. And in the upper, I'm not even sure what's going on here but these things look way more premium and this might be like one of the coolest Air Max DNs we've seen so far. This is a solid collaboration, really well done on changing the materials. Here's a big one. We just got official images of the upcoming Air Jordan 3 black cement. So here we have them. No new buck, no suede, no swapping out of materials, literally just straight up the exact black cement coming back. No aged midsole or anything like that. So you can see all of the shots over here looking pretty clean. Uh, I thought that this was a really good comparison. This picture on Instagram which shows like all of the different restock versions that has happened over the years since 1988. This one's basically supposed to be true to the OG specifications of that 1988 pair. Now, honestly, I don't want to make too many judgments on this 2024 pair because it's kind of hard. We only have like one set of official images. But yes, the elephant print does look significantly paler than the rest of them. Like you don't really have that contrast between the black lines and the gray. So 
I don't know. I will wait to see more images, but let me know out of all of these ones, which do you think is the best retro based off of this shot? Now, as far as release date, these are going to be dropping November 23rd. We also finally got some pictures of the upcoming Ma Manier Air Jordan 4. This is the Phantom colorway. We had one blurry on foot shot from ages ago, but now we actually can see them. They're looking real good. I might even prefer these. No, in fact, you know what? I do prefer these to the last Jordan 4s. I will say it is very similar though, except, you know, now they do have some nice contrasting materials around the toe box. So it's not just this solid kind of new buck material. This toe box has some suede, which I think is a nice little breakup because this is pretty much a monochromatic sneaker. It's a lot brighter, a lot lighter. You do still have that aged midsole. And of course you've got the classic Amar Menier kind of mauve or burgundy color throughout. It's going to come in the same packaging as the Jordan 3s that I think we've seen leaked a while ago, but it's, it's, yeah, it's hard to tell. This is like the only shot that we have, but basically the box folds open, which is pretty cool. And we also got a release date. They're going to be dropping the 19th of September. And uh, yeah, personally, after seeing this, these are definitely a pair that I'm going to be going hard for. Next up, we got a bit of a weird launch style. I don't really understand what's going on here, but it's all surrounding this brand new Adi Zero Adidas Aruku sneaker, which uh, Gunna performed in. And he's kind of, I guess, the face of this sneaker at the moment, which is really bizarre because this doesn't really strike me as something like a rapper would wear just because it seems like you know, a very comfort first type of walking shoe. Nevertheless, he styled them pretty solid. They look great on foot like over here. This is probably not my favorite colorway, but Lord knows with that huge stack of foam underneath, they look insanely comfortable. Now in this article from Soul Retriever, they did say that they're going to have a small release in 2024, very, very limited. And then the wider launch is going to be happening in 2025. But of course, we're going to have to wait and see as soon as we get any more updates on a release date, I'll let you guys know. We just got some very early detailed looks at the upcoming Air Jordan 1 Low Game Royal. Now, these are pretty much exactly what we were looking at in terms of like all of the mock-ups that were done previously. They're pretty much identical. The only shots that we have is of a GS size or preschool size. So yeah, it does look like a little bit strange, but this was the original mock-up and that's practically what we're getting. So they're keeping it pretty OG. The only thing that they're doing with these is basically just kind of sailing or off-whiting the uh, the midsoles and making it like a little bit aged. But honestly, I'm not mad at that. I think overall, these things look pretty solid. Exactly what people wanted, right? I mean, they're still going so hard with the Jordan 1 lows. It's crazy. They're just pumping out basically all of like the OG colorways and the Travis Scott collab. Now the release date for this game, Royal Colorway is going to be taking place on November the 30th. Very small update on those Wu-Tang dunks. We literally just got some better images, so I wanted to show you guys. Uh, I think the last ones we looked at were pretty close up. Here they are. This is what they're going to look like. This is the actual pair, not the pair from like ages ago. This is what we're going to be getting fall 2024. Pretty much exactly what we all expected, just like, you know, as close to the OGs as possible. Still don't have an exact release date of when these are going to be dropping, just sometime in fall. I would expect some kind of like drop maybe next month or the month after, but yeah, pretty soon. Delay Benbury just teased a brand new collaboration, not with New Balance, not with Crocs, this time with Puma. This man is pretty crazy because he just goes around to so many different brands and just collaborates with everyone. I think that's pretty cool as a designer instead of, you know, always doing the same thing with the same brand. And these ones are looking pretty cool. So a Puma sneaker basically on the upper, but you can see that that midsole has, I assume, his fingerprint style that he's had on like his Crocs and stuff like that. It's hard to tell from this shot and this is the only shot that we have but if we try and zoom in over here you can kind of see it's going to have that signature Soleil DNA in there. Very surprising that he's going with just a triple white pair because normally Soleil Benbury sneakers are very very colorful. Unfortunately we don't have an exact release date for these just at some point potentially this year but most likely spring 2025. All right this next one is insane. This one is such a wild story. I thought it was so hilarious I had to talk about it so take a look at this Donald Trump's new sneaker uses image from his assassination attempt on the shoes so bro almost got taken out like a week ago and is already got a sneaker with a freaking picture of it happening on there so these are called the fight 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 shoes high tops I think it's got the American flag around the uh, the ankle area and they're literally a 
picture of Trump with his fist up, with the text saying, fight, fight, fight. There's 5,000 pairs, each of them going to be numbered, and bonus, one time only, there's randomly autographed pairs, there's only 10 of those. Now what's even crazier is that's not the only pair he's selling, he's also selling the fight, fight, fight Tims. Bro must have been scrolling the gram or something because he knows that Tims are in right now and he just had to make a rip off. This is crazy. So this one is even more limited. The Tims are uh, only 2,025 pairs, I imagine, because they're probably going to catch a lawsuit off of them being so identical to a pair of Timberlands. Oh yeah, and then they also have eight pairs that are going to be autographed. So uh, the white ones are $300 and the Tims are $200. Well, that's pretty weird pricing. I mean, if you look at the gold ones, these things look straight off of AliExpress. I do not think these are made in the USA. Nevertheless, this is just absolutely insane that we have this man capitalizing on that situation so rapidly. I mean, that's, it's pretty crazy. Not gonna lie, pretty smart. He's probably gonna be making buckets of money off of this. Either way, moving on, we've got some pretty big updates for some upcoming sneakers dropping this year. First one is the Chlorophyll Pata Nike Air Max 1 is going to be returning this fall. That's right. So this is a potentially early look of what they are coming back as. Like these people are wearing it and yeah, it's pretty much just true to the OG. They're just bringing it back for, I assume, some kind of anniversary. They're going to retail at $160, dropping sometime this fall. Oh damn, so it's the 20th anniversary of Pata, which is pretty cool. You can see that on the box, makes a lot of sense. And uh, yeah, I think the original pair dropped in like 09, 08, something like that. So these ones coming back is definitely going to be a high priority for a ton of people. We also finally got some official images and a released update for the upcoming Their Skateboards Nike SB Dunk Low. So yeah, we've been speaking about these things for so long that it's just, I'm not going to spend too much time. But basically, they're dropping next month on the 2nd, so pretty soon. Solid pair. I think there's a decent amount of people who really like the look of them. So now you know the release update, just keep that in mind if you are after these. Sticking with Dunks, uh, we're going to be getting a Wizard of Oz Nike SB Dunk Low. I'm not even joking. It's a real thing and it's coming this holiday season. So this is, I guess, a speculative mock-up or this might even be the real thing. Yeah, this might even be the real shoe. So it's obviously inspired by Dorothy's ruby red slippers and uh, how shiny they are. Because if you take a look at this, you can see that toe box is definitely going to have some shine to it. And e well, in fact, all of the overlays are going to have some shine to it. This whole sneaker is going to be very red and very shiny. Honestly, don't know how to feel about these. I imagine some people will really be hyped for this because it's a definitely a different crossover. Personally, it's not something I would wear, but I would love to know what you think about this. Are you glad that they're doing this collab or is it just strange and you're not into it? We also got some more images of the upcoming Air Jordan 1 Black Toe, the reimagined pair that's going to be dropping this October. We finally got a look at the box and guys, I gotta be honest, it's about damn time. Jordan Brand did another special release and it looks like they are going to be going pretty hard on these. But these definitely look like they're going to have storytelling, they're going to have special packaging, which I'm pretty excited about. So they got the picture of Jordan wearing these shoes around his neck, which is basically what this pair of sneakers is like from. Like literally they're adding the Air Jordan text instead of the Wings logo from this image. You've also got a bunch of different images on the special paper. Probably it looks like early drawings of different logo designs. Maybe Michael did. You've got the Wings logo on the box, more images. This looks really cool and I'm just glad that they're doing something that's just a little bit extra, a little bit more stand out from a regular pair of Jordan 1s. Hey, why not? We've got so many different Jordan 1s, it's why not do something a little bit different. Like I said, we've got a ton of Travis Scott sneakers that have all been leaked and rumored, so let's get into some of them. So first one up, we're going to talk about the Jumpman Jack. This is the bright cactus colorway. Spoke about this a while ago, but we've got some new images and a new release date. So these are now going to be dropping this November time. So take a look. This is them right over here. Basically, the Jumpman Jack just with, you know, the bright cactus, this kind of lime green color. So these are going to be dropping on the 13th of November. And honestly, I really, really hope that they stop making these things so limited and they actually start releasing a decent amount of numbers so that people can actually try them out. Now, after that, we've got a ton of this new Spiridon model or what they're now calling the Travis Scott Nike Zoom Field Jack. 
box. So this is the latest one, the Lech blue color. So this is a 2025 rumor and it's basically pretty straightforward. You've got a light blue upper or some kind of blue upper with a white Nike swoosh, a brown midsole, which is pretty questionable. I don't know how well that goes together, but maybe what it actually looks like, it kind of works. Yeah, $170 for the retail spring 2025 release. Let me know what you think about these and let me know what you think about this model in general. Now we've got another pair, which is a holiday 2025 release. This is the limelight color, which the only image that we have is of Travis Scott wearing them, I believe at a concert. These ones don't look too bad. I kind of prefer the louder color on here instead of the blue one. It just looks a little bit cooler. And then the next pair that's going to be dropping this year is the Baroque Brown colorway, which is fall 2024. And this we do not have an exact image of just these very close up shots, which you could basically see. It's going to be some kind of mixture of suede, nubuck, and then this kind of mesh material around the back. It's also going to be interesting to see how this sneaker does in terms of popularity because it doesn't have a reverse swoosh. And I know people love that. Another holiday release is going to be the white chocolate colorway. This one is white on the upper and then chocolate or some kind of brown for the midsole and the Nike swoosh. Again, holiday season, no exact release date, but I'd love to know what you think about this sneaker model. Do you like it? Are you interested in trying it? All right, we got some Yeezy news. So last week we spoke about how there was going to be another big restock of Yeezy sneakers. And guess what? It took place on that Monday, the very next day. However, it seemed to be, it was just in the US. So what's the next Yeezy drop? Well, I would look towards the US if you haven't already had this restock in your region. All of these sneakers that dropped in the US should be coming and having a global drop at some point. But the interesting thing is they restocked some pretty crazy models. They also brought some new ones in that we hadn't seen yet. So they had a restock of the Pirate Black 350s. Uh, the Desert Sages were available, Cinder 350s. They had the Breads, a bunch of different foam runners like the Sand Colorway, the Sulfur, Stone Stage, Stone Taupe, Onyx. Yeah, just a ton of foam runners, a bunch of them. I'm gonna quickly scroll through this. This is all of the pairs that dropped a ton, a ton of stuff. Now, what can we expect for the rest of the world if you're still waiting? Here in the EU, we didn't get anything. I would expect just basically be on the lookout. It seems like Monday is the day where Adidas normally drops these things. But as you can tell by now, uh, they don't announce anything. They don't kind of tell anybody anything. They just silently put it on the website. So if you are looking for any more Yeezys, that stuff on sale or just new releases, just uh, a kind of, you know, I'll try and update you as quick as I can. So yeah, be on the lookout tomorrow. And if not tomorrow, just yeah, over the next couple weeks and months. Just subscribe to the channel. I'll keep you up to date. Now, another topic that I've had so many questions about is all of the Yeezy clothing that is being sold by Los Angeles Archive. So I've had so many messages. We spoke about it a couple weeks back and I said I was gonna make an order and determine if they're selling legit stuff or not. So I did, I ordered a bunch of stuff. It all turned up and as you can see, everything is exactly what it says it is. So honestly, I fully understand if you guys were like, is this legit? I mean, they're selling $20 t-shirts, $45 hoodies. Uh, they, they've got the Dove hoodie over here for $75, even though that sold out. I don't know if you guys wanna see a video on it. It seems like pretty basic stuff, but some of this stuff is pretty good. I really like the uh, the cargo pants and the heavy sweatpants. T-shirts are pretty solid for 20 bucks, like the quality's decent, but they're also gonna be dropping a ton more stuff that they've put out on their like Instagram stories or stuff like that. Either way, I just wanted to update you guys because I've had so many questions about it. It is legit in my experience. I've had all of my stuff. I did order a Dove hoodie as well to check it out, but uh, yeah, just wanted to let you guys know. Supreme just got sold by VF Corp. They sold them and they took a loss of $600 million. So yeah, Supreme has had a pretty rocky few years. Uh, they were acquired by VF Corporation in 2020 for $2.1 billion. And now after a few years, I know that some people have said that VF Corp has been ruining Supreme. Uh, I don't know whether it's just time and people are kind of fed up with Supreme, but there's definitely still some hype there. It's not like it's completely dead. Either way, they have been sold to Essilor Luxotica, I guess. I've never heard of them before, but uh, they're now going to be running Supreme for, they got, I mean, they got it for a steal. They got it for a lot less than it originally went for. They're promising that they're going to keep Supreme's core values and operational integrity intact while setting the stage for future growth and innovation. So yeah, we're gonna have to wait and see what kind of changes go on. I don't know the general consensus on how people feel about Supreme at the moment. So if you're into Supreme and you kind of have any feelings, let me know down in the comment section, what's the current state of Supreme? And is it a good thing that they have sold? Maybe it's gonna breathe new life into it or is it 
bad. Final story for today, we gotta talk about these freaking Nike lawsuits because they're getting out of hand. The latest lawsuit is against Shoe Surgeon for $60 million. This man was slowly stepping further and further on their toes and they decided, you know what, we're done. Like, you've seen us hand out lawsuits before, what do you think you're doing? We're handing you one now. So if you guys don't know the Shoe Surgeon, he basically does custom sneakers. He does them for very, very exclusive events or celebrities. If he doesn't do it for that, then he sells it on his website for thousands of dollars. His customs are usually really interesting and he does some like crazy stuff with it, new materials, but it's all based off of like Jordan sneakers, Nike sneakers. It's never anything that strays too far away from it. So you can see this is an actual, you know, screenshot from the shoe surgeon's Instagram that was included in the Nike lawsuit. And this is a Travis Scott fragment just done in some kind of snakeskin leather. So that's kind of the type of thing that he did, different stuff like that. And basically Nike put out a statement why they're suing him and it's pretty long. They stated that they actually tried to reach out to the shoe surgeon and try to resolve this matter privately and he did nothing about it. So they've kind of been forced to take legal action against him. So this is specifically for counterfeiting, mass customization and trademark infringement. He also said that the shoe surgeon is teaching others to create counterfeit Nike sneakers. These activities are illegal, deceive consumers and create confusion in the marketplace around source authenticity and quality of Nike products. Now, the shoe surgeon did respond to this. He put out a statement on Instagram. He said, We are confused. Nike has chosen litigation over a discussion, but we are confident with proper dialogue and collaboration, we can resolve this with the new management team and turn it into a win for the culture. Now, the general consensus says pretty much that uh, they're on Nike's side with this one, and I understand it's a bit of a strange one because it's kind of like a huge you know, corporate business, corporate entity versus the little guy. A lot of people are just kind of saying that he's pretty stupid to be, you know, designing his entire business around someone else's IP. Now, again, Nike said that they reached out to try and, you know, solve this privately. And then the shoe surgeon is saying that, hey, we're confused. Why did you start a lawsuit without discussing with us privately? And yeah, so we don't know who's really telling the truth and who's not. But if you had to ask me, I'm not surprised that this has happened like at all. In fact, I'm only surprised that it's taken this long. But I would love to know your opinion on this. Like, what do you think? Are you like happy that Nike's going after these people that are making custom shoes or reps of Nike's products? Because they've been absolutely hammering them recently. But there you have it, guys. We do this every single Sunday. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. You're always going to stay in the loop with the latest sneaker releases and updates. I can always keep you in the loop. And if you want to check out another video, click that one right over there.